I'm Tom Baker, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the new BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe. Now, this is a new car for BMW. It doesn't replace anything in the range. Instead, it's an addition that is squarely aimed at taking out the Mercedes-Benz CLA and A-Class sedan and the Audi A3 sedan, two small four doors that have been extremely successful for BMW's arch enemies for the last five or six years. They haven't had a car in that space, they do now, so we're gonna be taking an in-depth look at the 2 Series Grand Coupe here on local roads in Australia to see whether this is the small, sporty four-door you should be buying. Now, we've largely seen this car before because it's basically a one series hatchback underneath. But the important question is, how much has actually changed? Is it a better car to drive? Because you and me have talked at length about the one series, it's good points and it's not so good points. So we'll be revisiting that and seeing whether or not they've made any key adjustments to the two series. Otherwise, a lot's familiar. The same two launch engines as the one series, a three cylinder petrol and this 235i turbo petrol, M235i. And what we'll do is jump into the cabin and start there first. Inside, the similarities to the one series hatch are really obvious because the interior is almost a carbon copy with little to differentiate it from the hatch. But that's not a bad thing because we really like the interior of the one series. It's attractive, it's functional, and it's very well built. The quality in particular is something to write home about, which is good, and that all carries over to the 2 Series. Now, a lot of people think BMW's cabins are like cookie cutters because it's, you know, the interior on this low-ish cost 2 Series is quite similar to a 7 Series, which is really expensive, but hey, that's good for you if you're buying at the lower end of the range, isn't it? Now the M235i does have a more performance-based interior than the 218, so we have these really nice like pew-like sports seats with a little M tricolor swatch on the side. Now this, is, this car has um, black, which is fairly conservative, but you can get bright red leather, or more like a Jaffa kind of orange, or even an Alcantara seat if you don't want leather seats. In the lower end 218i, you can get lots of different colors, gray, chocolate brown, etc. So you can kind of customize the one series to something that you're going to really like. Now you get a beefy leather steering wheel here, BMW's new M steering wheel. Only get paddle shifters on the M235i, interestingly, but on every 2 Series Grand Coupe, you get really good infotainment. Two big 10 and quarter inch screens. This one's a touchscreen. It does also have BMW's iDrive controller. Wireless Apple CarPlay is now standard for life. The subscription is dead. Wireless Android Auto is gonna come out as an over-the-air upgrade later this year. And you get digital driver display in front of you too, which is nice and crisp. Plus all the materials are soft, plush. You know, it feels expensively made, which is important if you're gonna have a luxury badge on the bonnet. And the practicality is good too. Standard wireless smartphone charging, big cup holders, reasonable size bin, and door bins that can fit a properly big water bottle as well. So up front, it's very nice. What about in the second row? So here I am sitting behind my own six foot self in the second row of the M235i Grand Coupe. And you can see that the space on offer is fine, nothing overly generous, but that's par for the course for this segment. Small sedans are not big cars and they traditionally don't have much headroom. And as you can see, if I sit up straight, my head is up against the black headliner of this car. Legroom, got half an inch between me and the seat in front and tow room is just okay. The hatchback, the one series hatch does have more headroom. So if you're gonna be carrying tall people in the back, probably buy a station wagon or an SUV and not a small car, but the one series hatch does have slightly more room in that regard. But for the people sitting back here in the M235i, at least you have rear air vents. They're not in the base model, sadly. We have two fast charging USB-C ports, flip down armrest with cup holders. And the, comp the bench itself is actually reasonably comfortable and the materials are soft. So it's hard to take marks off this one. Now, I reckon the 2 Series Grand Coupe is reasonably attractive from the front end, and of course, design is subjective, but around the back, I'd say it's a bit more ungainly. There's some cues from BMW's SUVs, like the X6, with this pronounced deck lid and the line flowing across. 
Let me know down below the video what you reckon. But interestingly, it's a sedan. Even though it's called the Grand Coupe, it's not a liftback, unlike the 4 Series. So it's got a traditional boot, really big amount of space under there, and a wide aperture to put stuff in. But the deck itself, or the, the floor itself, I should say, is actually quite high. Now we do have a netted area, we've got lots of underfloor storage. So this thing is a reasonably practical vehicle. And in fact, it splits the difference between the 1 and the 3 Series in terms of both length and boot space, which is kind of a fun little bit of trivia. Let's take this thing for a drive next. So yes, there are some ways the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe differs in terms of its driving experience compared to its very close relation, the 1 Series hatch. And that's because it's a little bit longer in the wheelbase, it's a longer and heavier vehicle overall, and those sorts of things tend to change the way a car gets down the road, albeit in fairly subtle ways in this case. And we'll get to some of those differences in a minute, but first, let's just remind ourselves of the choices you can get under the bonnet because it's largely identical to the 1 Series, or it is identical. So the base model, the 218i, that is a really charming little 1.5 litre turbocharged three-cylinder petrol. Uh, so three cylinders might not sound like much, but in the BMW application of that engine, it really punches above its weight. It's a lovely little thing producing 103 kilowatts of power, 220 newton meters of torque. And trust me, that is more than enough. For most people, the 218i gets the job done. And it's a really cheerful and characterful thing with a thrummy engine note and, you know, pretty nice dynamics. However, it is paired to a seven speed dual clutch automatic gearbox, which is fine, but in the previous one series, that engine was the same engine, but it was paired to a torque converter auto, which was better. So it's a slight step back in terms of the gearbox, just in urban running. Then the flagship engine, which is the car I'm driving now and I've been telling you all about, is the M235i X-Drive, and that's a two litre turbocharged four cylinder, even though the 35i designation used to mean six cylinder, you know, that sort of thing is now happening at BMW. But it's seriously powerful and torquey. 225 kilowatts and 450 newton meters, which is plenty. This thing really gets up and goes, and because of the standard all-wheel drive system, it can put that power to the ground. Plus the eight-speed torque converter gearbox made by ASIM in this case is very nice. It's a really excellent engine and gearbox. So for that, I give it lots of credit. I mean, of course, if this was a small six-cylinder rear drive car that'd be even better but hey you can get that in the 3 series and the new bmw 3 series is a tremendous effort is the 2 series grand coupe a tremendous effort well i wouldn't say tremendous i would say it definitely gets the job done but i think an interesting thing is that the 235i is basically the same price as a 330i and i accept what bmw says that you know People who are interested in this car are probably not going to be interested in a 3 Series and vice versa because the 3 Series is more traditional, more conservative. This thing is a bit more progressive and, you know, certainly more extroverted. But they just drive in really different ways and the 3 Series drives better. I don't mind the steering in this 2 Series. It's, you know, mid-weighted, reasonably easy, reasonably predictable, but largely feel-free. But one thing that BMW have improved compared to the 135i is that this M235i is on better tyres. So we have Bridgestone Potenzas on this car compared to the Continental Premium Contacts on the 135i. And the Conti is not a good performance tyre. I still think something like a Pirelli P0 would be even more suitable because it's hard in a very torquey front biased vehicle with a Torsen LSD like this one, you know, you need a really grippy tire to be able to put that torque to the road and you still struggle at times here to put it down. Um, and especially because you can only send 50% of the torque to the rear wheels. It's really up to either the suspension or the tires. And given the dampers are very stiff, the fixed dampers are very, very stiff on this car, you have to pay more for adaptive dampers and you have to downsize to an 18 inch wheel, so it's a faff that very few people are gonna do. I would say the suspension and wheel and tire package is still not perfect on the M235i, but it is an incremental improvement on the one series, which is important. But I think that for Australia, with our characteristic rough roads, BMW really should have specified the adaptive dampers and smaller wheels as standard, because that would have improved the way this car goes around corners mostly by improving how it deals with mid-corner bumps and imperfections. So that's one thing to take into account. A 
BMW 330i, which is about the same price, may have less power and torque by a little bit, but it's very balanced, really capable, pure rear drive dynamics, lovely steering, it's just a better car all round. It's less shouty, it doesn't have the crackles and pops of the M235i, but hey, I guess it's good for BMW that they can offer two different alternatives. And once again, I make the point that it's not to say this car isn't a good car, it's, you know, it is good. It's just not as good as the 3 Series, because the 3 Series is a traditional driver's car, a longitudinal engine, rear wheel drive. This is not trying to squeeze blood from a stone, but it's trying to do something which is much harder, and that's attach an all-wheel drive system to a front drive platform, really amp up the outputs of a Turbo 4. It's just harder to make a really pure driver's car that way. However, there are lots of good things we can say about it. The M Sport brakes are tremendous, sits really flat in the corners, it involves you as a driver, gives you stuff to do. The driving position's good, the seats are excellent, the stereo, the interior, the materials, it's built well, and the safety stuff is decent, though you do have to pay extra for full AEB by optioning up adaptive cruise, which just seems silly at this end of the market. So those are our detailed impressions of the new BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe. Now, it's hard to deny that this is an important car for BMW. They do have to have something to take on the CLA and the Audi A3 sedan, but I think smart buyers will closely research this car and the 3 Series sedan to tell the differences between them, because for me, I think the traditional balance purity of a small rear drive BMW is still a more enjoyable experience than a turbo all wheel drive but front bias setup like this car. But that sort of thing is ultimately very subjective. And this is a nicely built, nicely proportioned small car that still has a lot to like about it. Let me know all your thoughts on the 2 Series Grand Coupe below this video. While you're down there, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.